All right, let's talk UNC Northern Iowa. It's game one of Atlantis. Tips off at 12 p.m. on November 22nd on ESPN. Connor, we've seen this UNC team maybe let opponents hang around a little bit so far, whether it's the Radford or the, the Lehigh game. They pretty much handled Riverside from start to finish, which was an encouraging trend. But, um, you know, second halves have been pretty fortunate for the Tar Heels. They've looked to have made some improvements from this year. And I know so far Northern Iowa hasn't been great, but it is the best opponent they will have faced. What do you think the Tar Heels need to do to, to get a win here? I just think it's about staying within themselves. Um, you look at at their offense, the Tar Heels, and, and what they're going up against defensively. And the areas that you and I have struggled are not really sticky stat areas. Um, they are 348th in three-point percentage against. They're 356th in free throw percentage against. Three-point defense is a little bit stickier than free mm -hmm. throws because right. you can't defend free throws. But neither of those are, are very sticky stats. And, and UNC is not a team that really bases their attack off of the three-point jumper mm -hmm. anyways. So just attack them. You're going to have an advantage inside no matter what, you know how you, how you cut it. They have the best player on the floor in Armando Baycott. And I know Jacob Hudson has been – playing pretty well he's been rebounding pretty well but Baycott's the best player in this game uh he's the clear dominant player and you've got smart perimeter players around him that I think are more athletic than you and I that I think are longer than you and I so they're going to be just a bigger more athletic better team uh this is potentially potentially a trap game if you and I can somehow muster any semblance of jump shooting, which they haven't done to date. But outside of, of getting hot uh, early on in this game, this is a game that I expect UNC to be up double digits from about the 10 to 8, you know, 7 to 10 minute mark in the first half until the end of the game. Hope you're right. <laughs> a lot of the a lot of the points you made, I couldn't have said any better myself. You know, Hudson, he has that 6'11", 250 pound frame. Theoretically, I'm like on paper, you can throw that big body at Armando. Ar Armando Baycott has had some issues with length in the past, but then when you take a step back, you realize Hudson couldn't really get on the floor for like what a 10 win Loyola Chicago team last year. Um, I, I think Baycott still has a, a massive advantage there, and you know somehow like. It seems like from a national perspective, what he's been doing so far hasn't really been talked about because it hasn't been a, against the greatest of competition. But uh, he's averaging over 20 points, averaging over, I think, 15 rebounds, and he's shooting 85% from the free throw line, which is the biggest development because he draws a ton of fouls. He's made some tweaks with his mechanics um, that should only further drive those free throw defense numbers down for, for Northern Iowa. Um but yeah, this would be a great get right game for Carolina to get hot from beyond the arc. You know, that was a huge, uh, a huge focus for the heels this off season. Hubert Davis specifically targeted shooters out of the portal, but so far Cormac Ryan, he's been in a pretty bad slump. I think he's over his last six over the past two games. RJ Davis has been a little more up and down than expected. Uh, Harrison Ingram has made some nice tweaks to his jump shot and he's, I think over 33 or 34% right now. And it's it's looked promising. It, it looks good when it leaves its hands, but yeah, this would be a great game for Ryan to get back on track and for RJ to start to gain a little uh, consistency from beyond the arc and build off of that. Uh, I will say, like, like you said, that it has some trap game potential. The history of Northern Iowa as a team that has pulled off some big upsets before um, they beat Carolina in Ames back in 2015, the fall of 2015, Marcus page was on that team. Uh, Marcus Page is on the coaching staff, so hopefully he's like letting these guys know, like, don't overlook this team. And Marcus Page also lost to an inferior Butler squad in Atlantis when he was either a sophomore or a junior. So, you know, maybe you have some veteran experience on the coaching staff that navigates him. But yeah, that that scares me, as does the fact that like a, a very similarly ranked Portland team uh, lit UNC up from deep in the PK 85 last year. Very, very similar vibes with, you know, early, early game, the first one of that showcase. And I just hope we don't see a repeat of that type of performance. Yeah. And, and okay. 
let's be honest here. This is a U and I team that has yet to beat a division one opponent this season. That's fair. They they kept it close in their first game. I'll, I'll give them that against a top 80 uh, opponent. But when you're looking at these teams in these games where big upsets happen, you start to look at teams that have a lot of experience and in general have the experience advantage over their opponents. Uh, Northern Iowa is pretty experienced. They aren't a UNC team that has basically every player or most of the players in this rotation have at least three years of experience at the Mm -hmm. D1 level. So UNC is one of the most experienced teams in the country. They've been there. They've done that. They're smart. They're facing an opponent that's clearly inferior. And I think there's also going to be just that sour taste in the mouths of guys like Armando Baycott, mm-hmm. guys like RJ Davis, where this is a this is a game that UNC loses last year. Um and, and I think they're going to go in knowing that that they yeah. can't lose these types of games. Uh, you know, UNC may or may not struggle with top top opponents this year. We'll see. But they're going to go into this game knowing, okay, we're we're going to at least come out of this avoiding a bad loss and be ready to to take on a Texas Tech or a, who's Texas Tech playing? Villanova. Villanova uh, in that game. I'm not saying they're looking ahead because that would be prime trap game, but yeah. they're going to look at, we need to take this this game seriously before we get to a Texas Tech or Villanova. Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm with you. I can't understate like how important this tournament is for UNC. The the path is really lining up for them to win it, and like I don't trust Villanova. I don't trust Texas Tech yet. Like Texas Tech has less size on the perimeter than even UNC does, and UNC doesn't have a ton of size one through three. Uh, I like Michigan, obviously one of the best offenses in the country. But they can't guard anybody. Memphis. Uh, they could be scary, but you know, erratic play, erratic coaching at times too. Like this is shaping up for a favorable withdrawal for UNC to to get Hubert Davis a couple of marquee wins in the non conference, which they just haven't been able to do the past two seasons. Um, so they, it's one of those things where it's like you can't, you can't. I know it's a trap game. I know Northern Iowa has had a tendency to pull upsets in the past. It's a good program, great mid major, but you can't lose this game. So, um. You know, and I, I don't think they do. I actually believe UNC will cover. Kim Palm has the line at 12. We'll see if it's like that. Um, I'd be surprised if it's like a, you know, a dominant performance start to finish. But to me, it feels like another game where maybe Northern Iowa can keep it close for the first 15, 20 minutes, maybe even a little bit into the second half before UNC can wear them down with their depth. Because, yeah, they actually do have legit depth this year as well. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not too terribly worried about it being close. I, I think UNC probably wins this by about 15. Whether it's they they're blowing out Northern Iowa and then they, you know, put put on the brakes and, th- and throw in some of their their deeper rotational pieces, or mm-hmm. more likely probably they they keep it around the the 12 point mark. Uh, but this UNC team can shoot free throws, uh, as you mentioned, Baycott. Uh, looks improved from the free throw line. So even if he's the one drawing most of the fouls, which is probably likely down the stretch, like you can keep, you can keep Baycott in the game to, to absorb fouls and then have him in there for his, for his defense and rebounding on the other mm-hmm. end. So I, I think they probably win by 15. Um, but again, this is a game that they, they have to win and it's, we we've seen it. We saw the close game today between or yesterday, whenever this this is coming out. We're recording this on Monday uh, between uh, Kentucky and, and St. Joe's, uh, which I didn't think was going to be close either. So, looking at that, looking at some of the other upsets, give give me UNC in a blowout. 